What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel and this is our last video in the collections series, at least for now. And in it, we are going to talk about sequences, which are a way of optimizing running things through the collections library. We'll just go ahead and get into this. Uh, we will create a new Kotlin file uh, called sequence. And then we'll create a main function. And then we'll we'll walk through um, a bit of a use case where, where maybe we would want to use sequence. And so for that, if we have our library and then our books, and then let's say we want to first map the book. So we'll have book. Let's say we want to do book and then copy it where the title is going to equal book to or book dot title to upper to uppercase. So this will first capitalize the title of the book. And I'll say we want to have yet another map function where we have our book again. And then say we want to do book dot authors first. So we'll, yes, yeah, so we'll do val first author, and then we'll do book.copy, and then we'll do authors equals list of, but we'll only give it the first author. So we'll only include the first author in this book. Now, let's say we want to do a filter function. And so we have our book. Let's say we only want to uh, include books where it is a nonfiction or oops where the book genres and then uh, let's see we don't want any we want them to all be so it is genre nonfiction and then let's say we want to do another filter uh, this this example is is really just to uh, kind of show the point of using sequences instead of um, lists but to do that you have to have a pretty complex uh, collection setup so we'll do another filter and we'll say book genres dot or actually we'll do book price let's say only books that are greater than ten dollars greater than or equal to ten dollars and if we do Maybe another map. And this one is just going to be where we have our book again. Then we do book dot um I don't know, the title, how about? And then we'll have at the end of this a for each loop where we have our book title. Then we can do print line book title. Cool. So that was a lot. We'll go ahead, we'll run this just to kind of show what it looks like. And so we have zero to one, why we sleep, all of these books which map or match up with um, all of these operators. But what you'll notice is your or IntelliJ will give you this warning. It'll say call chain on collection could be converted into sequence to improve performance. All right, so that kind of gets into the question of, well, what is a sequence? Why would I why would I use sequence? Why is it telling me this? And the reason why is each time that you run the map function or really any function on the collections library, remember, it takes this iterable and it returns a list. So right here we have a new list. Here we have another new list. Here we have another new list. When we run the filter function, just to you know, just to show, it returns a list. So new list, and then finally new list. But then ultimately, all that we're doing is we're just printing out the values that match for that last output, that last list. And so this new list isn't going to be used in our final output. Same with this one, same with this one and this one. 
and then this is going to be what is ultimately used. But throughout all of this, we have all these wasteful allocations to creating a new list for every single one. So if we do as sequence, what this ends up doing is it runs them all as a single sequence of items. So it will first go through, it'll say this book, it will uppercase it, then it will map it, it'll figure out does it need to filter it, does it need to not. And so you get away from all of those list allocations. And actually in our use case where we just have a for each function, we, we can just run that for each as a sequence. But there are use cases where maybe you want to do all these transformations and then just return the last list. You can still do that by doing this to list as sequence can then be converted back into a list with the to list function. All right though, but there are situations where you may not want to use as sequence. And so in this example, we're, we'll use this measure time milliseconds function, which all this does is it, it's a um, function that Kotlin gives you where you can measure how long something took to execute. And so we will go ahead, we will actually just extract this function, this library books function into its own function. We'll just call it um, testing sequence. We'll run that. And just to, you know, just to clean it up, just to make it a little bit easier to see what's actually going on or what we should be looking at. And so we have our testing sequence function and then with this measure time milliseconds, we'll do the also scope function to say um, execution time, and then we'll do print line executed in execution time milliseconds. And so if we go ahead, we run this function, you see down here at the bottom, it executed in 33 milliseconds. Well, that's with the as sequence function. What happens if we if we don't? So 33 milliseconds is what we are what we're going with. And go ahead, we run it. Well, we see this executed in 30 milliseconds. So using the the, the list function or the list form of these actually performed better. So you know this of course isn't um, it's not like fully scientific, I guess, because we're only running the function once. So we'll go ahead, we'll use a range, which we didn't talk about. Um, if you would like me to talk about ranges more in depth, let me know. Would be more than happy to cover those. But all you need to know really is we're just creating a range that starts at zero, goes to 25, and it will essentially run this code block um, 25 times. And then we'll still have our also, um, we will use our average function just to average the time. And then we will go ahead and we will run this again. That doesn't look right. It probably shouldn't be one millisecond. Um, although I guess there's always that chance that, uh, that it did. We'll go ahead. We'll run this again. We'll see. Okay, so one, three, six. It might be just the initial allocation for the memory or for this list, just to create this list the first time that we run the program. It takes up a little bit of time. Um, let's just see what sum will do real quick. Just to, just to double check. So we do the sum, it takes 34 seconds. And then your move as sequence, how long does it take? 24 seconds. So that kind of gives an example where, you know, our books, while it took a lot of time to create those objects by hand, it's only like 38, 40 items in the list. So it's really not something where the sequence is probably ever going to pay off for something that, that small. But Let's go ahead and let's say that we are going to create a new list. So let's say zero until 1000. And then let's say we're going to create a new book for each of those. So I'll just copy in this code. So it's a new map function. And I'll just clean this up just for readability's sake. We will put these on separate lines. 
and then so all this is doing is we're going to iterate through until a thousand and we're going to create a new book so we're going to create 1000 books which will then ultimately go through all of this functionality and then actually so we're filtering nonfiction we'll go ahead and we will make this genre nonfiction as well just to just to make sure that we're not filtering out items that um, shouldn't be there and then we'll also for the price we will multiply this by I don't know, 100 so we'll go ahead we will so we'll run this now um, and I'm going to drop this down to 10 just because we'll keep making this larger and larger and so eventually it will take a bit of time to to execute so we go ahead we run this um, it goes through it prints out the book titles um, that match and it takes 105 milliseconds I'm actually going to comment out the for each part um, and we'll just run it again all right so we're at 23 milliseconds when we aren't printing it out so let's go ahead and you know, we'll add the as sequence and we're going to add it after the books have been created because that's you know we're converting the map to the sequence and then we go ahead we run it we'll see 19 milliseconds so we're you know kind of within the same ballpark all right so let's go ahead let's say we want to do a hundred thousand and we will run it as just a function or just as a list we'll see it executed in 426 milliseconds all right we'll convert it back to a sequence and then we will run it again and then we'll see aha now it it executed um quicker so 182 milliseconds for the the total time to run it through 10 different times cool so the point of this is just to illustrate that there is a initial performance hit when you are converting anything to a sequence and that performance hit may or may not make sense like right now we are testing you know the runtime so we're not testing the memory constraints and so this is just to show that using as sequence may slow things down but if you're dealing with a large amount of of items so in this case a hundred um a hundred thousand items converting it to an as sequence before doing all those operations can actually save you a lot of time um in that sense and then also ha you do have those memory constraints to to think about as well while we're not benchmarking those um you can know that converting things to a sequence will will of course give you better memory constraints because you aren't duplicating a list every single time you're converting it that is it for this video um and for this part of the series at least uh so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions if you have any um other videos that you'd want me to to go over in terms of like different collections and different functions where we didn't go over it in this series let me know but otherwise thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you're excited for more Kotlin videos, be sure to subscribe. And otherwise, thank you again, and I will catch you in the next one.